Okay. I don't hear too many other questions about the homework, so let's begin. Um, I'd like to talk about where, just where we left off yesterday. We were kind of left off in the middle of doing a problem here. And so let's take a look at that problem. Do you remember this? So, you know, open up your notes. I, I don't like to end on like right in the middle of a problem. <laughs> so let's review this problem and make sure we understand what we were doing. So we're starting, we were just at the very beginning of starting to talk about multiplying these guys together. So take a look with me. We've got this expression multiplied by this expression. And just to refresh our memory, how do we multiply fractions again? Straight across. Numerators, denominators. So the same deal here, uh, right? And before you do, you need to do some factoring, OK? So let me just slow down on this just a little bit here um, and make sure everyone's good on this. So first of all, do you agree that in the numerator up here, we can factor out a 4x? Because there's a common 4x to both of these. And this is what you're left with. Down here, we can factor this as two binomials, x plus 3 and x minus 1. And over here, we can factor this as two binomials, x plus 3 and x minus 2. And then 4x, we can't do anything with that. So just everyone stare at that for a second. Don't look at the next step yet. But is it, was everyone OK with those three factorizations? Again, we should say it again. Really, factoring is going to be your big nemesis in this unit. It's not the new stuff. It's still the factoring, isn't it? A lot of you still don't like factoring, I can tell. So far, so good, though? All three of those factorizations sit well with you? OK. And then, and then I think it's pretty clear that you might want to cancel out the 4x and the 4x. And I think it's pretty clear that you might want to cancel out the x plus 3 and x plus 3. And then you might say, that's all I can do. Right? But there is something a little more you can do if we use a little trick. Take a look. If we factor out a negative 1, which normally you might not do that. But the reason I'm doing it is because I think, hey, you know what? 1 minus x and x minus 1 look a lot alike. So maybe I can kind of do some algebraic trick to make this happen. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1 out of, x minus, uh, out of 1 minus x. Do you agree that negative 1 times x minus 1 is actually the same thing as 1 minus x? Do you agree with that? Can I rewrite 1 minus x? I just want to make sure you're not. You, you know I'm not like pulling a pass along. Is it true that I can replace 1 minus x with negative 1 times x minus 1? Are those the same thing? Convince yourself of it. Do the distribution. Isn't that negative x plus 1? Is anyone confused by that? Or you're like, that's fine. Are you fine with it? Jocelyn? Are you fine with it? Are you fine with it, Jennifer? Yeah. Are you sure, Alan? Are you sure you're okay with it? I just want to make sure that I'm replacing this one minus x by negative time negative one times x minus one. Yeah. It, yeah, it'll be negative one times x, which is negative x. And then what's negative one times negative one? Plus one. So isn't that what this is? Isn't this, it's in the other order, but isn't this 1 plus negative x? Yeah. Isn't this the same as this? Yeah, negative x plus 1 is the same as 1 minus x, isn't it? Hmm? It's like saying, isn't 5 minus 6, isn't that the same as a negative 6 plus 5? Aren't those the same thing? In both cases, you get negative 1, right? Does it sit well with you, I guess? Makes sense to Gregory? Yeah? Just want to make sure this is okay with Carlos. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why I want to write it that way. Why did I do that? Because now what can I do? Yeah, right? I mean, I had a motive for doing that. I wouldn't normally ever factor out a negative one just for the heck of it. The reason I did it is because I kind of knew this would happen. So what do we have? We have negative one times x minus two. Or our final answer, we could write as negative x plus two. So I think we all agree that that's a very nice way to write this. Instead of all this mess up here, we can just write all of this as negative x plus 2. All right, I have a quiz question for you. Ready? 
plug 7 into this expression for x. Everywhere you see an x, plug a 7 in. And tell me what you get. Negative 5. How'd you do that so quickly? You're a genius. How'd you do it? Oh, because this is the same as this? You're right. Good. Oh, you're going to say that's a Yeah, right. Good. Wouldn't you rather, the point is, wouldn't you rather work with this expression than this expression? If someone told you to graph this, all right, ready? Go. Graph y equals bleh, this. Ready? Go. What would it be? What would it look like? Could you do it? y equals this. Graph it. It would be, what is this? It'd be a line, wouldn't it? With a slope of negative 1 and y-intercept of 2, right? It'd just be a, a line, like looks like this. So feel, or you could do this, graph this on your calculator in y1. What will you get as a picture? Just a line. That's all you'll get. Because that's what this is. It's just this expression. Who had a question? What'd you say? Someone said a kind of question. Yeah. Yeah, what, you're wondering, you're okay with this step? You're just wondering how I got from here to here, or which one? Up to here. Yeah, the x minus 1's cancel out, right? This is the situation, Alan, where you have like a times b times c over b. What would that equal? a times c, wouldn't it? Do you agree? And the a here is negative 1. And the c is x minus 2. Do you agree? So I think you've just boxed yourself into the corner. You, you must both now believe that this is what we should have, right? This is the same exact situation. Okay, here's one for you to try. Ready to go? This one's a little meant to be a little easier. I think you'll find it to be okay. So give it a try. Give it a whirl. See if you can come up with a simpler way to write this nasty stuff. What's the strategy? I mean, really, there's only one ticket here, right? Factor everything, right? Just everything. Factor it all. That's the hard part. Maybe you'll do the fun stuff.
All right, I need some help here. All right, you ready? I got you here. All right, I'm gonna have, there's three things to factor in this picture here. Um, hold up. Wrong class. Um, so, how about, uh, I need a, all right, Mitzi, on the first one here, what's this, how does this factor? Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Okay. And then the bottom, we don't need to factor at all. It does, right? Because if you multiply it out, you get x squared plus 3x minus 2x, and that's going to matter. If this is a positive 3x and a negative 2x, that's how you're going to get that positive 1x. If you do plus and minus, this will be a minus here. Right? All right, and then uh, keep going here. Jesse, give me this guy. Got it. And um, what else do I want? Carlos, give me the last one there on the bottom. <laughs> okay, so let's stop there. Everyone okay with those factorizations? Like I said, that's the big, that's like the big part of these problems, isn't it? Okay. And then here comes the, four, the fun part, right? We cancel stuff out. X plus 3, X plus 3, X plus 4s cancel out. The 2s cancel out, leaving just x minus 2 over x squared. Is that all that's left? Oh, well, you can cancel like, all that out. Like, even yeah. Even if they're not together. So. Yeah, I mean, this, this multiplication symbol right here, this little centered dot, is really just a transparent wall, right? I mean, there's really not, it's almost as if this is one big problem. You can cancel, you can rearrange stuff up in the numerator across the two numerators as much as you like, cancel things out then. I think, again, wouldn't you rather work with this expression than this expression? I think it's a lot. I think we'd all agree that this is, in fact, simpler. Okay. Let's, let's turn our attention to division now. All right? That's the last thing we want to make sure we say something about. And in order to talk about division, we should talk about it in the context of like what you might have done back in middle or elementary school first. Again, as usual. Tell me how to approach this problem before we can even get into x's and whatnot. Amanda thinks she knows. What did they teach you in Brazil, Amanda? Flip what? Where? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, is everyone okay with that? We can. In Brazil, that's how they do it. In America, that's how we do it too. Actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <coughs> is that how you did it? What do you call that, by the way? Instead of division, dividing by a number is the same as we would sometimes say multiplying by the reciprocal, reciprocal is the, the $10,000 word right there. The reciprocal. Where's the money? I'll pay up later. I'm good for it. I promise. Check in the mail. Yeah. All right. And then from there, we just, now, we've just reduced this to a previously solved problem. You know how to multiply, don't you? What does this come out to be? How about uh, five? Well, do you agree? Is what this problem end, ends up being? Okay. Uh, if you like letters, here's the, here it is in letters, right? It just says what we just said, though, right? If you want to divide something, you just multiply by the reciprocal. Division is just an illusion. There is no division. There is no division. All there is is multiplication. So that's going to be our strategy with more complicated problems, too. Just turn a division problem, always, first thing, every time. Just turn it into a multiplication problem and then proceed. That'll be my, like, that's going to be our strategy, I promise. Chops into your question a second ago, I was ignoring you, sorry. Oh, yeah. You don't want to miss this, though. This is good stuff or what? This is good stuff, right? You want to leave? No. It's like, would you leave if you were, like, a front row at, like, a really great concert? It's only a little better. Go ahead. Hurry, then, because you're going to miss this crazy problem. I don't want to miss how you missing. Oh, right. So does that ring a bell? Yes, there's a keyboard back there. You can see it. Oh, I can see that.
<laughs> so here, here your, uh, so that should ring a bell. Am I right that everyone's thought about multiplying by the reciprocal before? I don't want that to be like brand new news, but maybe it is. I don't know. It's been a while maybe since you thought about that. Uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do in our, I, I, don't, I hesitate to even put steps up here. That's exactly what we're going to do though. We're going to flip. Anything that has a division sign in front of it, we can flip. And then do what we've been doing. Factor, divide stuff out. All right, so steps two and three are not a big deal. We're just adding step one to the mix. Again, factoring is still going to be an issue. You already getting all this? You get an example? Yeah. Yeah. I hope where else you do it. You don't spend up on your own. This is an example. They help me. Remember, you can watch the video. I don't want to find it. Is it in a master's? I was there. Just go to um, the two, right? You have to um, go to the course document. Go to the unit you know, seven, rational function. You can click on lessons. So I'll talk one two. All right, you ready? Here we go. So taking a cue, even though this looks terrible, this really has the same structure. Do you see it? As uh, the problem that Amanda solved for us, right? So what are we going to do? I'm going to start by just not doing anything except for rewriting it. How are we going to rewrite it? What do I do? I flip something. 3x minus 12 over 5x, right? 3x minus 12 over 5x. Divided by 5x, right? Thank you. Okay. What, what, tell me what to do. I leave the first one as is. Like, and I flip the second one, right? That's what it means. To divide by something means to multiply by its reciprocal. So, and that's still true even in this complicated, nasty situation. Wait, Michigan, why, why do you use the first one? Is it always like that? Well, why didn't you complain back here, Jennifer? Because uh, I thought that was, I don't know. But, right, I mean, you flip the second one. When you divide by something, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. For instance, if someone says, hey, what's 10 divided by 2? You would say 10 times 1 half, wouldn't you? And you wouldn't have to say, you could just say five. And <laughs> <laughs> what if someone said, what is 10 divided by one half? What is 10 divided by one half? How would you do that? What is 10 divided by one half? Wait, is it always going to be the second one? It's always going to be the thing that has the division sign in front of it. Yeah. That's the one you flip, right? So always the second one. Well, I think in a second we're going to have a bunch of different things happen. But for now. For now. I guess. Yeah. I, I don't want to give you the say, I don't want to say always because like, because what if I give you a problem like this, A times B divided by C, right? Right? Then you're flipping this guy, just C, right? You agree? The second after. What if I said A divided by B times C? What if I did that one? Which one do you flip there? No, just B. Why? Just the one that has the division sign to the left of it. It gets flipped. So I think that's the better advice. Okay. Um, flip the one that has. All right. Stop talking. Just do this. Ready? Go. <laughs> Ready? Go. I mean, now this is a multiplication problem. Now this is a multiplication problem. So you guys should be able to do it, right? This is similar to what we did before. I mean, we cross the bridge now. Uh, we get five x over something. Tell me what that one, Gregory, if you can. What's, uh, can you factor 3x minus 12? Oh, I got 12? you. Well, X, um, what, do do what is it? Yeah, 3, what is it? 3, three plus x oh, minus 3 minus x. Yeah, they can't pull out an x, but 3 times, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that thing is. X minus, what did you say? Yeah, okay. And then what about the numerator of that next one? Jason, you want to give it to me? Did you factor this guy yet? X squared minus 6x plus 8, what would that be? When you get it, let me know. And so Jason's going to get the numerator there. And oh, he's not in this book. And um, what about if you want to get the denominator? What's that going to be? You want to do that? 
you to deny it. How does that factor? This guy here. How does that factor? Jason, you got the numerator yet for me? Brilliant. All right, do you agree with all the factorizations that the, those people just gave me? Yeah. Okay, and then the fun part is, you're right, cancel stuff out, yeah. so. X minus two. Those, that, that, that. Whoa, wait, what, wait, what? Way too fast. Everything cancels out except the five and the three. So the x and the x cancel out. The x minus four and the x minus four cancel out. And the x minus twos cancel out. And the only thing left is a five up top. And the only thing left on the bottom is three. Oh, you're thinking if it's yeah. If you're, you're thinking if it's x to the fifth power. So you guys, this is cool. What does this mean? If you were to plug in, why did you cross out the x? Oh, because there's an x up top too. So if uh, if you were to plug mm. in, now tell me what would happen if you plug 10 into this big expression? What would you get? Mm. What if you plugged in 100, 5 thirds, anything? No matter what you plug in for x up in this crazy expression, you would always get 5 thirds. Have you ever seen like a lame? Uh, I, I say lame because it's probably not a real magician, but have you ever seen like someone do this like kind of magic trick where they say like, okay, give me your shoe size. And then now I want you to multiply that by 5, and then divide that by your shoe size times 3 minus 12, and then, right, have you heard some people yeah. do that? And then they tell you at the end what number you should have, even though they never knew what your shoe size was at the beginning, right? Have you heard people do this before? Take yeah. your age and divide by 17, and then, right, have you, right? So imagine someone were to do this. Okay, think of a number. Multiply by 5. Divide by 3 times your number minus 12. And then divide by your number squared minus 2 times your number, divide by your number squared minus 6 times your number plus 8. What'd you get? 5 thirds. No. Because it doesn't matter whatever you start with. And people would be like, you are magic. How'd you know that I was going to get 5 thirds? Well, it doesn't matter what you start with, right? It doesn't matter what x is. No matter what x is, you'll get 5 thirds here. Pretty cool, right? I think we definitely would agree that this is simpler. 5 thirds is simpler than the expression we started with. All right, how about this one? Yeah, we should start by saying, isn't that 2x squared plus 3x over 1? So what does it mean to do dividing by that? Where you flip it, it'll be 1 over. Very good. So what do we have? 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 over 6x squared. Do nothing to that. And then times 1 over 2x squared plus 3x. All right. We have some hurdles to clear here. Okay, so stay with me. 6x squared we can't do anything with, right? But we have some factoring to do here. Um, help me out with, let's start with this. This guy's going to be actually a little bit tricky. This numerator over here. Why do I know, looking at it, that it's going to be a little trickier? Well, yeah, because our a value, the coefficient on the quadratic term, is not 1, which makes this a little more prickly than usual, right? So we'll, we'll worry about that in a second. How about we do the easy one first? What's this guy down here? Can you factor that for me? No, you can't. But that's a good thought. That is, in fact, yeah, yeah, that's the first thought you should have. Is how can I be lazy? I would do the same thing. <laughs> no, seriously. That's what you do. Um, what can we do downstairs, though, over here? No, I'm thinking about downstairs here. Can we factor anything out? We can factor an x out, leaving 2x plus 3, right? So I'll do that down there. All right, now upstairs here, how do we factor one like this that has a leading coefficient that's not 1? Well, we could actually go through that whole process of splitting the middle term. But in our like regular Algebra 2 class, I mean, this is not like this is not high octane Algebra 2. I'm not going to give you ones that are like super, super hard. Usually, you can just do a little guessing. Okay, That's my strategy for you. Okay, Just take some guesses. Are you ready? I think it's two binomials. Do you think that's a fair guess? OK. I think that it's x and x. Oh, wait, no. It can't be x and x, because that would be x squared, not 6x squared. So what could it be? I don't know. Um, maybe 3x and 2x? Yeah? Would that work? What else? That's not the only thing that would work, though. What else could work? There's one other possibility. Maybe. 
six x and one x could be right. And so, but we don't know. Okay, so we'll just try this, and if it doesn't work, then we'll try six x and x instead. Okay, and then what could go here? Actually, not a lot of options for negative three. It could be three for negative three. It could be three and one negative one, or it could be one and negative three, or it could be the other way around too in the other spots. Okay, so we only have a couple options here. Um, so. I don't know, maybe we try like minus one and plus three or something like that. Let's try it, let's see, do we get the right thing? Sure. Try it, try it please, everyone test it. Everyone try it, does this work? No. Six no, x squared, six. negative three x? No. And positive six x would be a negative three x in the middle, not a seven x, so that's not working for me. Um, so I, that's what I would do, I would just keep making some guesses for these two positions. Uh, minus three and plus one, maybe? I don't know, try that for me. That's six x squared, I like that. Negative nine x and positive two x is negative seven x. That's wrong, but close, what should we do? Uh, I, think, I think we got it. Do you guys agree now? Let's try it, let's make sure it's right. Six x squared, nine x and negative two x, yeah. And then negative three. Do you agree that we got it? I think we got it finally. Just a little guessing is all. My, that's my strategy. And actually, you can kind of sometimes hack these problems a little bit, right? Maybe you could have guessed if you read my mind as, because I like manufactured this problem to come out nice. <laughs> like, you feel free to hack the problem, right? Test taking skills. Um, maybe you could have guessed that one of the factors was 2x plus 3, right? Because you see it down here. And you think maybe Mr. Chase is nice enough to have something cancel out. All right, so I think our final answer, there's nothing else in fact that does cancel out, so our final answer is 3x minus 1 over 6x squared, and we'll just call it a day, right? Is that good? Make sense? Kind of like it? Oh, yeah, sorry, there's another x over there. What else? Yeah, sorry. What is that going to be then? 6x cubed. Thank you. Yeah, we have a 6x cubed downstairs. That was a close one. Are you good on this one? Do you want it to go away? I can make it go away. Any questions on that so far? How to handle that situation? Now you know. Okay. I think I just have one more for you to round out the day. Here it is. And it's pretty crazy. Oh my goodness. Wait, you just have to put a one in and one and then you're going to leave like that. So is there anything that needs to be flipped? If so, which the one? Last one, the last one? Yeah, the last one only. Good. So before we do anything else, let's write this out. And maybe this middle one, what does this guy do? What's, what's going on there? That's, that, that's not a fra fraction. Oh, maybe it is. We, just, we could write it as 3x minus 5 over 1 if that helps. And this is x plus 5 over 9x squared minus 25. Okay, and then proceed from there. I think that makes the thing a little nicer now. In fact, there's not really anything to factor at all, right? Except for the very last denominator. Can you factor that last denominator? If so, tell me how. It's actually a difference of squares, isn't it? Do you recognize it? Factors as 3x plus 5, 3x minus 5. Okay, and then is there anything that cancels out? Yeah, again, we kind of could have probably hacked the problem a little bit. You can see this coming. Our x plus 5s, our x, 3x minus 5s cancel out, so we just get what? x over 3x plus 5. And if I were to ask you to graph this thing right here, y equals that graph. What would its horizontal asymptote be? That's right, I hear you say it's y equals one three, one third, right? Y equals one third is the horizontal asymptote. And the vertical asymptote is x equals negative five thirds, actually, is the thing that makes the denominator zero. Anyway, just a little review of things we talked about once upon a time. So actually, this is just, if you were to graph this big thing in y1 on your calculator, you would just get one of those rational functions with those asymptotes we just said. 
Anyway, we're doing pretty advanced stuff. Every once in a while, I need to step back and look at this and be like, this is not my little brother's algebra anymore. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is crazy. Look at the 